Hi guys, um, welcome to my new YouTube video, oh well, this one. Um, so we are going to take a break from Jenkins on this one and we're going to have a look at something called Sonar Cube. Now as you can see from the homepage, they go continuous code quality. So the idea is, is this can continuously on each Jenkins build, so we are going to go back to Jenkins. Um, on each Jenkins build, this can inspect the code that was committed to the repository and then it would, like you can see here, it would tell you things like, oh, okay, well, might be a null point exception. So they've got different languages. So let's see if they've got something under um, JavaScript. So I've got a bunch of rules and they can tell you, for instance, things like unreachable code, change argument. So this, I think, was for... So let's see, what else do they have, right? Um, so the one that we can, in particular interested in this one is um, the PHP support. So let's have a look if we can see, yeah, okay. So like I said, they don't really provide any sort of um, screenshots for what it can do, but okay, what it does tell you, it provides um, profiles for Drupal and for PSR2. So we're kind of interested in this PSR2 part. Now, as with the Jenkins, I've already set up a Sonar Cube server. There's a bit of a difference using Terraform. So let's start with that. As with Jenkins, I've set up a, a Terraform script for installing Sonar Cube onto DigitalOcean. So let's see. We've got startup. We just upgrade current version of Ubuntu. Um, so we get all the latest packages. We install some basic default things that we're interested. Um, so let's see. So this is for Sonic Cube. Okay, sorry, sorry. I have the wrong one there. Um, so let's see. Okay, so let's start this again. So I just set that to Debian front end, non interactive. Get and update all the packages. Create a swap file. Um, install the digital ocean monitoring agent. Install some general tools. Um, install Docker. And this is a bit different to the Jenkins one. What we're going to do here is we're going to dockerize the running of um, Sonocube. So Sonocube so runs off of a database like Postgres or MySQL. In this case, we're going to use um, Postgres. Um, so first thing that we need to do for this is that we first need to create the, um, the image or the container that runs the Postgres image. And to be able to do that repetitively, we first need to create the Docker volume to hold the data that's within Postgres. So the first thing that we're going to do here is create a volume called PG data for holding the Postgres data. We are going to start up a container for Postgres called Sonocube DB, and we're going to map it to that port so we get external access for it if we need to. Um, we're going to do a mounting of this volume to that directory. So that is a predefined directory within the Docker image that says that this is where the Postgres data is going to live. And I do think there is an environment variable that you can pass into the container that changes that, but we don't need to do that. Um, so what we do here is, is we've got a Postgres user called Sonar that we pass in as an environment variable. Similarly, yeah, as an environment variable, we pass, pass in a password called Sonar. As before, um, we are not going to expose this port 5432 to the world. It's not going to be accessible. And the only way that you should be able to get into the server is via using SSH keys. When Without those SSH keys, you cannot get into the server. So the idea is, is that as long as you keep the SSH key secure, is, is that the security should be fine. Also, it does what I'm trying to do here, as I'm not trying to run any sort of um, commercially sensitive application. This is merely just kind of um, to play around with these things and to figure out how they work. So in terms of doing that sort of thing, as maybe I've changed one or two of these things to be like a environment variable to find on the actual box instead of um, in plain text on a YouTube video. So based on your security requirements and based on let's say sort of security orders and things like that is that you might want to change some of how all of this stuff works. Same with the previous videos. You might want to have a just for your own sanity, you go like, okay, well, this, from a scared point back, this works for me, it doesn't work for me. For my use case here, yeah, like I said, I've just, it's more about playing around. So for my use case and trying to do this, I think it works fine. Um, so 
And then lastly, what we're going to do is we're going to set up the, um, the Sonar Cube part, right? So this is the container. This line here is for the container for Sonar Cube. So what we do here is we use the um, Docker link command to link that database that we defined here up there to the same name within the container. So we don't have this thing about which name should I use or if the left one for the container or the right one for the image or vice versa. Um, we're just going to give it a name Sonar Cube. Um, so Sonar Cube runs off of port 9000. So we are going to expose that because we are going to need, well, not 9000 to the rest of the world, but just at least to the host. So, um, so if you guys don't know what this does, is that um, as part of the whole Docker, the networking stack, how it works, it kind of has a NAT between the containers and the host machine that Docker runs on. So the 9000 on the right hand side is the um, container port and the 9000 on the left hand side is the host port. So what this does is that send any traffic on port 9000 on the host uh, machine's network interface, send that traffic to the port 9000 of the containers network interface. Okay, same as um, next up, same as with the Postgres is we have to define some sort of environment variables just to get everything up and running so as part of that as we give the Sonar cube a jdbc name this is the username for the database and the password for the database and then just the JW, jdbc url for the database again so um jdbc is a java um sort of the Java framework and libraries for working with databases. So the idea is it abstracts the actual database. So JWC can talk to MySQL and to Postgres and sort of um, MS SQL within its own sort of um, architecture and framework. And all you have to know is the sort of JDBC um, API calls to be able to interface with a database and to make database calls, if that makes any sense. Okay, and then obviously the last thing is that we just specify the image that we're running this container off of, and that is Sonar Cube. Okay, so next up is just for third part again. Um, covered this in one of my previous videos, just for clarity again. Um, third part is a tool used for um, generating SSH keys on the server. It's, the idea is that, that um, you basically get SSL certificates for free. So the idea is that if I think how this thing works, I'm not quite sure, is that if you go to a company like Thought, for instance, is they issue certificates for a year, whereas these um, these one for certbots, they have a much, 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 much smaller um, lifespan, but they automatically get renewed by a background process, so you don't have to worry about that. Let's say like they renew on a daily basis. And this is just to make sure that, that this command is running off of um, your server. It does some DNS checks to make sure this command is running off of the server that it says it's running off of. Okay, so lastly, it's just security. So it's allow port 22 for the SSH access. Again, I'm using keys, not passwords, so this should be secure. Um, you're doing port 80, this is for HTTP, and port 443 for HTTPS. And then all we're doing, and lastly, is turning on the um, firewall. Um, so this is the Nginx config. So this copies the Nginx configs across. At the moment, I've just got it at sonocube.example. So it's pretty much exactly the same file as for the Jenkins example, except replace Jenkins with sonocube and use port 9000 for the port instead of what I used for Jenkins. Okay, so let's see. And the end of that is just a reload um, Nginx. To, um, so these Nginx files that take effect, I could probably also just do a Engines, yeah, okay, do a nuclear work. And then lastly, it's just as with um, Terraform, is the connection that um, this file of Terraform uses needs to use when reading these commands for the remote exec um, um, to execute them on the server, if it makes sense. Sorry. Started a bit there. So the idea is, is this connection um, tells Terraform how to connect to this to this resource that we've created with a Terraform file to execute these commands and this remote exec. Okay, and then lastly, as per last time, I just kind of have this last little bit um, commented at the end so that after I set up the service and after I've sorted out the DNSs, I can just kind of run this and then 
proof I should have um, SSL certificates for this. Okay, so um, I've already run this file and I've got this sort of Sonocube here. Um, it also tries to explain a bit more about what it does according to that um, well, the same sort of idea. So I think the default is I'm going to this for one thing, the service is not going to be available um, by the time I've updated this video. Secondly, if I were to run Sonocube for myself, I would obviously not use these default credentials. I would have changed that by then. Okay, so we just go never, never. Okay, cool. And then, okay, so mm, let's go to my token generate. I guess I don't know a token. So this token is used to identify when you're run, performed. It's been compromised. You can revoke it anytime. So obviously, like, by the time if I run something myself, this would definitely not be my token. Okay, so then which platform are you using? Okay, so we're going to try and use it, which is OX. We're going to, so we're going to use it with a Jenkins server, which is a Linux based thing. And then um, let's go. If I'm used to project key, uh, what? So we're going to try and use this with that Laravel application that I that I had in my last video. Um, so then just do that, and then so this is so uh, as part of what Sonocube does, it's got a client side which is called Sonos Scanner, which talks to this Sonocube server, and sort of this is the command that you would pass in when you're actually doing that scan. So you would copy paste this in, and then later use it for when you are scanning the um, when you're scanning the application. If it makes sense okay so let's see so welcome to scanning view blah, 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 visit and then obviously i think the idea is supposed to run this but we're not going to run this yet so let's just try and skip the tutorial for now so let's see so we've got each overview issues so the idea is that you have any issues in your source code that pop up here and then for instance you can go resolution whether you mark them as fixed or resolved so the idea is that if they pop up again as um, Sonic here can mark them as recurring issues, um, got other rules and creation dates and things like that to filter by. Um, we can't remember what measures stores. Same with code, I'm assuming this is just to browse the source code for. And then activity of source, just the history of the project. And then overview is kind of like a dashboard that gives you some sort of overview stats similar to what you see on the um, home page. So let's see. So that would be your overview page would look like that. Um, once you've kind of got projects going and you start using it. Anyway, I think that is Sonocube in a nutshell. And I think if you're still a bit unclear about why we want to use it and what it does and how it works is that um, I'll be covering that in my next YouTube tutorial. Um, I'm hoping that one comes out a lot faster than this one because I've had some stuff going on in the background which has delayed the making of this video. And I'm really sorry for that, but um, thank you for sticking out. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much.